Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. It's good to have you with us this morning on this bright, wintry day. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritually questing individuals who are joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including the diversity of beliefs from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather this morning with gratitude on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6 territory and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all of our children. I've invited Corrine Jackson to share a couple of readings with you today. Advent. During the Advent season, we celebrate the qualities of faith, hope, love, and joy. Yet these must be viewed through the prism of paradox. No faith is worthy without the capacity to doubt all things, for then it is only credulity. No hope is possible without the specter of defeat in the wings, for then it is only dreaming. No love is strong without the dread of loss in the heart, for then it is only passion. No joy is complete without the certainty of sorrow in the future, for then it is only frivolity. Thus, it is wrong to mislead people with simplistic notions, for they distract us from the fullness of life. After all, the seas have storms, the clouds have lightning, and the roses have thorns forever. Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. Who is your Emmanuel? Who is your God is with us? The one you were promised, the one you have been waiting for. For the ancient prophet Isaiah, he was a boy soon to be born who would guide the people of Judea back to peace and harmony with God. He would bring hope and victory and greatness to the tribe. He would be a gift from God to his chosen people. Who is your Emmanuel? Your God is with us. For Christians, he is Jesus of Nazareth, the baby in the Christmas story who grew up to be a remarkable teacher amongst the Jewish people whose ideas about love, forgiveness, and justice changed the world forever. Who is your Emmanuel? Your God is with us. Perhaps your Emmanuel is a political leader standing for the rights of the oppressed, a Martin Luther King, a Gandhi, a Mother Jones. Perhaps in their work with people, you feel God is with us. Who is your Emmanuel? Your God is with us. Perhaps your Emmanuel is an artist bringing transcendence to the human spirit and lifting our hopes and dreams into the light. A J.S. Bach, a Martha Graham, a William Shakespeare. Perhaps in the presence of great beauty and creativity, you feel God is with us. Who is your Emmanuel? Your God is with us. Perhaps it is a child, created from our bodies, the child who is filled with the potential to do every great thing, your promise from God that the world has hope to justify for justice and beauty. For in the presence of a child, we too can feel that God is with us. Thank you, Corrine. Appreciate that. When I was small... The first real and important mystery of Christmas was what's in the box. (laughs) Perhaps it was the same for you. Unable to read yet and dazzled by the colored wrapping and ribbon, the big-eyed questions were, is that for me? What's in it? And of course, are there any more? 
And I'll be honest, I still feel a little of that thrill every time I see a wrapped present. Even, even the empty ones under the tree. Going, oh. But that was a childish and an unsophisticated mystery. So next up would be the mystery of Santa Claus. And, and how did he do it all in one night? And, and what is it like to live in the North Pole? And how did he keep all those kids sorted out? And, and just how did he get down our chimney? At least we had a chimney, although I never saw a fire in it. Those were my first Christmas mysteries. But as a child, I never found the story of the nativity mysterious. It was as real to me as Whitey my teddy bear. I had no trouble accepting and the exciting and somewhat scary story of Joseph and Mary traveling that long way and then having their baby in a barn and bright stars and angels singing and mysterious wise men with presents made complete sense to me. After all, back then, for me, Jesus was God. Sometimes I grieve just a little for the loss of that simple faith and youthful credulity that allowed me to believe the unbelievable. The thing is, it's why many of us try to maintain the presence of that magic of Christmas for the children. Whether you're a Christian celebrating the sun, S-O-N, or pagan celebrating the S-U-N, or the Jews celebrating the miracle of an undying, purifying temple flame, the holiday is a mysterious time. We're existing in a time of long nights, each themselves carrying some mystery and inspiring us to spin stories for one another. And there's also some little fear in the darkness. Like the Roman god Janus, it is a perfect time to look both backwards and forwards. So I think we need to see in the winter holiday season something more than the simple ideas and stories that we contemplated and embraced as children and still conspire to preserve for them. We are wiser and more sophisticated, not just older. Perhaps in this season, we should be contemplating mysteries appropriate to our maturing. The contemplation is what makes these holiday stories more meaningful. In our first reading, David Rankin, a UU minister now long retired, wrote that no faith is worthy without the capacity of doubt, that no hope is possible without the specter of defeat in the wings, no love is strong without the dread of loss, And no joy is complete without the certainty of sorrow in the future. Without these tensions and the mysteries they imply, the happy sides of the equations become somewhat empty. Frivolity and dreaming are two of the words he uses to describe this emptiness. And we might each long for the simpler days of time past, if they were indeed simple in your life. But those days were only fulfilling on a childish level. The mystery of the wrapped present gave way to the boredom of the soon disused toy. The magic of Santa Claus soon gave way as we observed far too many mall Santas, all who looked differently from one another and some who smelled really funny. The story of the child's birth gave way to the contradictory accounts of times and cultures long before the Christ child's appearance, when other great religious leaders were born with similar miraculous stories. The whole magic of the winter season gives way to the reality of sometimes unhappy days, of dysfunction in families, of crushing bills when we get swept up in the obligation of holiday giving, of the fact that poverty still exists after Santa's Anonymous has given out their gifts and the mitten tree presents have been distributed through the community centers. We need a deeper mystery to ponder. And don't get me wrong, the holiday traditions and the heartfelt gift giving and looking out for the needs of the less fortunate, I think those are good things. We need to open ourselves up that way now and again. 
But nothing in this season is going to offer a panacea or a solution to the real issues that face us and the society in which we live. This is the second Sunday of Advent, a season of anticipation. For contemplating the coming in traditional religion, it's meant as a time of preparing ourselves for the gift of the Christ child. But too often, too often it really is about meeting the expectations of families and friends and getting ready for parties and meals and travel while trying to squeeze some meaning out of a concert, a film, or a carol singing evening. I guarantee you there's not a Christian minister in this city who's not preaching a sermon today that somehow talks about, remember the real meaning of Christmas. It's about tending to the mysteries of the childlike variety with which I began. The package and the stories and the half-eaten carrots left by the empty plate of cookies and milk. So, for the last few minutes that are left to us today, I invite you to contemplate some of the other mysteries that might inspire you. The adult ones. Mysteries of faith and love and of purpose. Perhaps the real mystery of the season is the faint reminder often unheard amid the carols and the silver bells that each one of us is waiting for something unique to us. It could be the starting of a life or its ending or the starting of life over again after some heartbreak or setback. It could be that we're feeling a certain stuckness in our lives and are waiting for something to happen, anything to happen. It could be that we're waiting to finish something, a school program, a course of medical treatment, a working career, a job we hate. In the second reading, Sarah Schur turned to the contemplation of the season in a different direction. She asked the simple question of who is your Emmanuel? Who is your God with us? the one who was promised, the one who you were waiting for. It strikes me there are two ways to contemplate this idea of Emmanuel. On the one hand, Emmanuel can be taking that next step, accepting that the next thing to come our way and dealing with it head on, whether it's a reward or a challenge. It could be a new quality of life that we want so much that we can taste it. It makes us tingle. Emmanuel might be working out the steps of how to get there, develop a plan, and deciding today to commit to the plan. The tradition of Advent is about anticipation, yes, but part of the anticipation is preparing ourselves for this new thing that's coming towards us. We have to make ourselves ready and worthy of change. Soon-to-be parents have to make space in their homes and their lives for the new child. People wanting to move in, move on in the workplace might have to practice new skills and develop networks that will help make that possible. People facing the end of their working years are going to have to plan what to do with their time and their energy and their resources, decide how and where they're going to live, and so on. A mystery of Advent is identifying the change coming towards you and preparing ourselves for our Emmanuel. But another key aspect of the notion of Emmanuel is the with us part. Sometimes we get so involved in anticipating what might be coming next that we miss out on what's going on around us right now. How often... How often do we forget to notice the familiar and sustaining parts of our lives simply because they're always there? It's easy to get so engaged with the future that we miss out on the here and now. So what is there right now that you might be ignoring or taking for granted? What is the with us part of your Emmanuel? What would make your life poorer if it was not there? Maybe you're so weighed down by health concerns, either physical or emotional or both, that you fail to notice the good days when they come. Maybe you're so engaged in the next achievement that you miss the rich moments of today, 
you forget to stop and smell the pine needles. Preparing also means look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. When I think back to those long ago mysterious boxes, Christmas boxes that so stirred my imagination, I can't really remember very much of what they contained. Instead, what warms me are what I remember that happened before Christmas. Dad and my brother Marty bringing the fragrant Christmas tree into the house to defrost. My elder sister Maureen leading the work of decorating it like a benevolent general. She's still kind of like that. Being awarded the job of setting up the Christmas nativity scene in the fireplace that somehow Santa managed to avoid without in doing all of his work. And of course, Bing Crosby's Christmas album and the smell of mom's shortbread. Those weren't mysteries. But they were holy moments that were with me then and are with me now. Sometimes, Emmanuel is already here. Amen. Tess Bomberger writes, Waiting to be born again into the morning onto the day, from dark worn comfort of my bed full of sleep and blankets, back into bright winter scented air with its piney branches. Waiting to be born again into fresh vision onto clean spirit to a world of resurrection where life sits side by side with death, watching the rising and falling of our many human breaths, the daily negotiations of indefatigable sun, the pretty patterns of our slowly rotating stars, the childlike candor of the bright, unblinking planets, glancing at each other now and then with peaceful eyes. The chalice is extinguished, but its light lives on, in the minds and the hearts and the souls of each one of you. So carry it with you when you leave this place and share it with those you know, with those you love, and most especially with those you are yet to meet.